Thank you, John. Um, for, for those of that are catching us on YouTube, you'll see we've got a different background here today. We are, we've had to move the meeting over to John's house, and we appreciate his willingness to host and, 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 and clean. Is that what I'm I'm batching it. <laughs> He's batching it this week. But it's the first time that we've set up all of our, uh, our, our very basic uh, recording equipment together. And, uh, along, and on the TV. And it, yeah, and it's on the TV as well, oh. tried to, which we've tried to do. So we... You know, for old people, look at the technology that we just made. Well, I'm just saying. That's, that's the thing. But we're glad everybody's here with us. We're a little, we're a little light on uh, on around the table here this week. It's just Mary and John and I. As John mentioned earlier, before we we turn the recording on, the there's a there are some things going on at our church in which many of our our followers uh, and are here on Saturdays are are at. And so there's travel and other things, but as it was today, we're supposed to be the ones here, so we are here. Let's go ahead and get started uh, with the cynical, do our entering in prayers, and then we'll start on uh, having some conversations of about our our topic this week and probably for the next couple of weeks, uh, which is unceasing prayer uh, uh, and with the, the subword glory behind it. So in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Come divine will, come to reign in me. With, with this one hand, hand I, want I want to embrace my entire day. day. I want to embrace every thought, every word, every action, and all the people I meet, the things I have to do, all my duties. I want all to be in your most holy will. I want, I want to put, put my whole day right, right from this instant, instant in your most holy will, so that should I be distracted, or should there be things I forget, they may all be done in your will. Amen. Come, Come Holy Spirit, Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. And, and you shall renew the face of the earth. <clears throat> Remember your congregation, which you have possessed from the beginning. Oh, Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come unto you. Lord, are you with you? And with your spirit. Let us pray. Oh, God, who has taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us in the same spirit to be truly wise, and to ever rejoice in his holy consolation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. It's interesting when there are more people here around you, and you hear the volume and the number of voices saying the entering in prayers, when you flub like I did, you, you don't hear yourself. You don't care. No. <laughs> but when there's just a few of you, all of a sudden it sounds like it's got a microphone and a microphone behind it. Yes. I know I was distracted because John put up Ricky's uh, question about the, the document. Were you able to send it yes. to him? Okay. Well, not the document itself because that only has references. He's got the email that has it. In. He did get the email? Yeah. Okay. I know normally I, but I didn't have time this morning to do it. But if we run over, then I'll I'll uh, do do yeah. all the writings and so yeah. forth. So, the, the, so, so okay. Haynes probably can attest to this now too, and um, soon um, Paula will. But so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday goes by, and I'm like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do for Saturday? You start thinking, what are you going to do for Saturday? And so I said, I thought last, you know, I didn't know we were, were going to move on to glory. I thought we were going to move on to something else. And I told both John and Mel that I would send an email out to Paula and that we'd work on the cynical. And well, that didn't happen. <laughs> so come Wednesday, I didn't know what the cynical was going to be. But then you're like, you know what? It's not my cynical Lord. It's yours. You tell us what you want to have discussed. So I think it was Thursday morning that, uh, uh, Mel sent me an email. I'm like, okay, there you go. Mel's got, got the cynical this weekend. So, um, but in, it, it takes a while because there's probably so many writings that had the word glory in them and then trying to put them really into unceasing prayer. So, cause I said the word glory, we could have gone any path, you know, there's probably infinite amount of paths that you could have gone with the word glory. And so you have to really, you really just, you, you have, you do. Not you have to, like it's a punishment, 
but you really rely on the Holy Spirit to tell you tell you which readings he wants us to have during this with scripture and what catechism pops out for us. And uh, so Mel wasn't able to, Mel didn't get this to me till this morning. Right. So normally if I, if I work on it, if, if I'm working on it and the, like I do like what Haynes did and we list out all the scriptures so you can read it right along with us and the catechism and then all the writings, but we just didn't have time. And, and uh, um, but I love that too, because it came together. It just shows you again that it's not us. It's, it is truly the Holy Spirit because he works a full-time job. He's traveling. He's got stuff going on with his family. It's not like, you, you know, we're home in, in a contemplative atmosphere where come Monday, you just have your whole thing written out and the rest of the week you pray upon it. it sometimes we didn't come up, come to the Holy Spirit didn't give us our cynical till Saturday morning. I mean, there has just been, you know, but it is the Holy Spirit uh, doing this. So I'm excited to see what um, what God has given us this week to read. So future in the emails, that's why I said you normally have them written out or uh, not written out, but copied out onto it so you can read along. But it's just what happened this time. Yeah. And I mean, that's when Mary puts these together, as Haynes did last week, the 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 excerpts from the writing, the actual catechism, the actual scriptures, they they are they have the ability to take the time and get all of that into a document that comes along with the the, the email uh, I normally even when I have that and Mary has done it I will take it and just condense it down to what are the scripture readings what's the catechism readings what are the the book of heaven readings and what what's the the references and the date and, and some titles associated with it and talking about the Holy Spirit working this this time uh this week uh, uh I, when I I wanted to confirm back that's what we were doing which is why I sent Mary the the email and I misunderstood how she responded back to me when in fact she said if you need any help with catechism and scripture she said I'll be happy to help when I reread that I saw that's what it said the first time I read it I thought she was going to do the readings oh. and I was going to do and, and so that's why I was a little bit late getting it out and, then, and which is fine that's yeah. it's the way you know it's the way that it works but I have, I, to Mary's point, yesterday I had uh, a, a lot of my work. There's a, some presentations that we're, we're trying to pull together to be made uh, uh, the early part of next week, and there were some, there was just some some write ups that I had to get done, and I and I and I knew I had to 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 develop this cynical for today as well. I didn't have to. I wanted to develop the cynical for today. And so yesterday morning, I just said, uh, I said, all right, Jesus, I, 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 my time management skills are going to have to be in your hands today, as they should always be. But I just reiterated that. And sure enough, I got through the day, got most of my work done by seven. I had to take some time and go with the granddaughters for a little bit. And it wasn't until about 1030 last night that I started on this. But what I but I had been thinking all, all all along and just kind of about all right what what did I want to use how did we want how do we want to move forward with this and with the word glory I viewed that which is Mary and I were chuckling before the, the 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 video started but with the word glory I wanted to do something a little different than what we had been doing in all the other words as you remember this is this is going on I keep saying thirteen weeks but I think it's more than that I haven't really gone back and count. This unceasing, uh, unceasing prayer content, and then we started out with unceasing prayer the realms, and 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 from there it's expanded out to all the different words that we use in the realms, uh, uh, that praise and 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 adoration and faith and blessing we we did a few weeks, and as I was as I was kind of just mulling that over the last few days, I said. To me, glory is a little bit of a different word in, in the sense that usually when we are offering praise and adoration and uh, uh, thank, thanksgiving for uh, to, to God and the Trinity, we, it, 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 something has stirred us to do that mm -hmm. uh, or something is, has, has caused us that we are, inter we are, I will say, purposely interacting. But when it comes to glory... It, it to me that's a it's a different take on on unceasing prayer in the sense that 
it is it is not a, a stop think interact it is what happens on an everyday every moment basis when you are operating in the divine will and as we'll as we'll see through some of these readings the 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 context is just by doing our work working through our mission from, uh, from and from possessing and operating and growing in the divine will, we are, we are providing glory back to God uh, on, as we know, on the same scale that God issued the glory, uh, glory, his glory out. And, and we'll read through, through, uh, uh, through, through both, both the catechism and, and the scripture that, you know, in the con the, the context that the church has of glory, glory is the likeness of God. You know, we've talked about image and likeness before. And in these catechism readings, you know, it talks about the, the differentiation between image uh, and likeness and likeness and glory is the likeness of God. So it, it, it it's a, it's different in that it's just ongoing. And so we, we just, what, what I was hoping that we will come away from this, uh, this, uh, the end of the session, but certainly today is the beginning of it, is is the recognition that by operating in the divine will we are it truly is unceasing prayer we, it is an unceasing forwarding and and offering of glory back to god why because we are we are now coming into his light returning into his likeness as he says and we are able to provide that back and give that back to him and he loves that mm -hmm. he loves he loves receiving that back all right okay so what I'd like to do is change our order a bit. I'd like to start with the catechism and uh, readings first off, because they somewhat set the stage for uh, going out and, and relate and pulling in the related or introducing or helping to uh, 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 helping to understand the scripture, uh, the scripture items that we'll be reading today. And, you know, they don't all just totally fall in line, but if you look at them within the context of this, this, this global concept, of, okay, I'm, I'm giving, I'm giving glory to God just by living and operating and possessing the divine will. That's kind of the umbrella that, that I would, I guess, set up for us as we're, as we're thinking through and, 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 and thinking about these readings as they come through. So the first catechism is number 2809. We're actually going all the way through the beginning and the end of the book, but 2809. Uh, let me take the glasses off here. And this is, the, you know, this is, it's interesting when I, when I started pulling these together, I, I do, I go back to kind of the tenant, the catechism tenets that I like to, to, to uh, pull up when we talk about the divine will and, and as we know, the Catechism, the Scripture, and the, the Book of Heaven hold hands, and they 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 all intertwine with each other to provide the the deeper meaning that uh, that, that Louisa's writings provide for us. So two eight zero nine, the holiness of God is the inaccessible center of His eternal mystery. The holiness of God is the inaccessible center of His eternal mystery. What is revealed of it in creation and history, scripture calls glory, the radiance of his majesty. So his inaccessible center is revealed in creation and history and is called glory, which is the radiance of his majesty. In making man in his image and likeness, God crowned him with glory and honor. But by sinning, man fell short of the glory of God. From that time on, God was to manifest his holiness by revealing and giving his name in order to restore man to the image of his creator. But that, that essence, internal radiance of God as, as a description of, of, or as a depiction of glory is, is what, what I'm taking out of this 2809. And then if we go to 2566, uh, 
But it's interesting because he says inaccessible center. And now we know that the center is the divine will and God's saying it's not inaccessible anymore. It is now accessible. It is now the gift I am giving to you. And it's not just the image, but we are now growing in the likeness of God as well. So that that it was inaccessible until God gave us the gift to enter the center, which is the divine will. And therefore we can now grow in his likeness. Um, I want to pause there for a second. I should have done this before. When Mel was speaking before and he was talking about the inaccess the un unceasing prayer, and that you know, we talked about praise, glory, um, no, we praise, adoration, blessings, um, thanksgiving. Those are all as um, if you remember a few cynicals back, Paula mentioned this as well. They're all their own different colors of the whole spectrum of God. And God tells us in these writings, that's why it's so important to read these writings on your own, all 36 volumes, um, so that you can gather all this so that when we come into like a new topic like this and Mel says something, you kind of have a reference back to what Mel is saying. And what, what Mel was saying is that God says he pulls on your heartstrings. So at a moment, he's like, I want Thanksgiving. He'll pull on the string of Thanksgiving and immediately you go into thanking God for whatever God wants you to thank him for. Or he might say, I want some praise and he pulls on the on the praise string. Love, adoration, et cetera. He tells us that a few times in the writings. And that's what Mel was saying um, in the beginning of this. Now what he's just read in the catechism and what we also know through the writings is that glory is almost the thing that surrounds the whole, is the whole spectrum of all the light. And it was inaccessible until God said, it is time and I give you now this gift of living in my divine will, which is my center and it is now accessible. So he, we know this because we've been reading and studying this for, you know, several years and just my heart just wants to cry out to everybody, get the volumes and read the volumes and never stop reading the volumes because we're always learning. And if, if Mel didn't read that catechism today, I wouldn't have been able to put that together and like, oh, but God has now given us this gift. Mm -hmm. It's now accessible. And so therefore the catechism will change when the church has embraced the kingdom and has realized these writings are the gospel of the kingdom and put them in there. It's like, it is, it's accessible now, children. Come be in the fullness of the image and likeness of God. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> That, that, I like the way you yeah. pull those together. So 2566 reads, man is in search of God. In the act of creation, God called, calls every being from nothingness into existence, crowned with glory and honor, which we just read about in the, in the prior catechism. Man is after the angels, capable of acknowledging how majestic is the name of the Lord in all the earth. Man is capable of acknowledging how majestic is the name of the Lord in all the earth. And that majesty we talked about is that, that, that majestic radiance from the earlier catechism. Even after losing through sin his likeness to God, Man remains an image of his creator and retains the desire for the one who calls him into existence. All religions bear witness to man's essential search for God. And then the last catechism is number 705. And again, this context of, of glory and likeness and radiance and the the internal um, center of God is still the. Can I hold on? Yeah, one second. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Haynes texted me and I was answering the text. Let me let me get back to this. All right. So, um, hallowed be Thy name. When we, when the when all of the world hallow in the Our Father calls Him God and hallows His name. In other words, this is what this is saying. When they see his name, when they see him in all of creation, as we do, then the kingdom will come. Then the kingdom will come in the souls. 
that that's the process. Our Father who art in heaven, he's the creator of everything. Hallowed be thy name. And that's what this is saying. When we see his name in all the trees, in all of creation, in every soul, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And it enters into you, reigning in you, thy kingdom come. It's the process. And I love this because this catechism um, goes tells you about the process, right? It says, um, God calls every being from nothingness into existence. Realize we, we go to our nothingness, right? Crowned with glory and honor, and we 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 know that the the crowns. There's four crowns. Man is after the angels, capable of acknowledging how majestic is the name of the Lord in all the earth. But now we're not after the angels because I don't understand what that means. Man is after the angels because now living in the kingdom, I don't think we're after the angels anymore. You're now children of God, not. Well, not I think it means that the angels recognized first okay and then man came because man came after that's how i understood i just okay i wanted to verify that how majestic is the name of the lord in all the earth even after losing through his sin his likeness to god man remains an image of his creator which we have said we've lost the image and the likeness until you give your fiat voluntas to a until you give your fiat voluntas to a i want to live in the kingdom and I want it always revealed to me God's image and likeness in all of creation. So I recognize his name in all of creation. Then you come back to the likeness of God. And he tells us in the in the in in the writing, and I don't have the date memorized. I can find it from you. You ask him anything. Ask him what his um oh, I've lost the words. Um you will know, just like Adam had all the knowledge of all sciences, you will have this infused knowledge of all the sciences and everything of the world, right? What 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 trees are good for uh, fruits, what trees are good for the leaves are what's good for eating, what's good for health, so forth. It's the um oh it starts with an A and I can't think, I keep thinking adoration, but uh attributes. Sorry. He tells us in the writings. That all souls, all of his children will know all the attributes and all the creative things out there in the world. We will know what all they are good for. We will have the preternatural gift that Adam had of being able to name everything and knowing its attributes and what it is good for. Um, I can't say I have that, but God says that, ask him, he will tell you. So that's what this is saying. We lost that likeness and God said, I'm going to give it back to you. And part of the likeness is to know all the attributes of all of his creation, all the animals and so forth. Um, anyways, all religions bear witness to men's essential search for God. Um, yeah, we know that through the catechism as well. Anyways, I just wanted to... Yep. Hopefully it wasn't distracting, kind of like no, if you think, here, but... think about Adam before the fall, how he was living as you were describing, right? He was talking about the attributes that Adam had. The catechism, the catechism we just talked about that, or it just talked about that man, when he was created, God gave him honor and glory. And that was an attribute. It was by grace. But it was the, in the end, it was the ability for Adam to be able to walk and converse and have a relationship in the same scale that God created him. And then what the catechism talks about when Adam fell, we lost that likeness, which is that, that, that glory of God. And yes. the, book, the book of heaven is the return of the creature to the, the subtitle, right? Is to the order, the place, and the purpose for which he was created. And so... When you think that's, you know, that's where you're getting, that's where you're headed to, you know, you give, your fiat. you give your fiat, that's, that's, that's where you're headed to. And these writings in the book of heaven, Jesus gives to Louisa, to us, uh, how all this happens. And so when you, when you know that that, you know, God's nothing but order, if he's anything, we know that he is, a, he's, he's got order and his order is to, is to have this come back into place. And the catechism is, as we've just talked about, is describing it from the church's understanding through scripture that has been provided through this time. And, and, and so when you see these things and you read and hear these things, 
interacting with each other, they lace right up. And and when you, as Jesus says, if someone is willing to to be disposed to listen and want to learn about these writings, they'll the knowledges will come and you'll be able to see the things that he wants you to see. And they're pretty crazy, all those things that you're able to see in your day, every day. Um, uh, and Ricky was talking about that a little bit earlier. So uh, that's the that's the, the neat thing. And one of the reasons that we always want to pull the catechism and scripture in with, with these cynicals with our writings. Paula, Paula you're front and center <laughs> on our screen. <laughs> um, you know, um, <laughs> Uh, it's the the glory is what Adam lost, and we are we will be given it back because it's the glory of God Himself, this radiance. And uh, I I'm preparing something uh, prepare, nearly finished uh, about the heart and heartbeat in the divine world. So I will send it to you, and you have to figure it out. I can't moderate it, but uh, in this, you know, I've came to a psalm from David. Oh. And and it it really you know it when I first time discovered this there's there was a, somehow odd German translation and I looked into the the Hebrew words of this psalm and then I really was hit because I I read this my heart is steadfast steadfast mm -hmm. yes oh God my heart is steadfast I will sing and make melody. Awake, my glory. Awake, O oh harp and lyre, I will awake the dawn. Mm. So this psalm is so prophetic. It's about our time. Awake, my glory. You know, I was really struck when I discovered in, he in Hebrew, it's really the same word as the word for the glory of God. So it's you know, there is already in the, you know, so much um, prophecy in the Old Covenant, in the scriptures of the Old Covenant for this time. You know, it was, this is not uh, prophetic to to uh, the, the era of redemption. It's really prophetic to the era of sanctification. And I wake my glory, I wake my harp and lyre, I will awake the dawn. This is the dawn of the new era. And I was so touched when I um, read this. Oh, I can't wait. Thank you. Yeah. Awake my glory. I love that. Right. Okay. So again, uh, 705 still kind of in the, in the same, um, uh, in the same lines and, and, uh, ideas that we've just been talking about. Disfigured by sin and death, man remains in the image of God, in the image of the Son, but is deprived of the glory of God, of his likeness. So that 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 relation of glory and likeness and the loss of likeness, therefore the loss of glory, and the loss of glory, the inability to to be able to have relate have the relationship on the same scale with God as He created us. The promise made to Abraham inaugurates the economy of salvation. At the culmination of which, the Son Himself will assume that image and restore it in the Father's likeness by giving it again its glory, the Spirit who is the giver of life. So you read these things and pull them all together now with the, the, the context and the knowledge of what, what, no matter how far along the books, as Mary mentioned, should always be reading because the next time you read the same thing, you will have gained knowledge somewhere along the way and it will, it will, cause you to look at that writing in a little bit different and, 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 and provide even more knowledge to you. But this whole context of the, and it goes back, which we're going to read here in just a moment in scripture, it goes back to Genesis uh, 126, man was made in the image and likeness of God. 
And as the Catechism said, when Adam fell, we lost the likeness. The likeness is the glory. We had the inability to, 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 to maintain and possess and to operate from the glory of God until now, when these writings have been, and now Jesus has, has, has had his, his time and conversations with Louisa, and now they've been released, and we have them right here in front of us. How lucky we are. And just to reiterate, Matthew 24, the end comes only when the kingdom, the gospel of his kingdom is preached around the world. This is the gospel on the kingdom because it's the kingdom. And we're, and we're talking about glory. So in redemption, as Paula had mentioned, redemption wasn't the fulfillment of the glory coming. It was, the, he came to give us both the heir of the fiat voluntas to the kingdom and redemption at the same time. But we had to wait till the tree of sanctification was fully grown before we could enter into the fiat voluntas tua. And so the tree, he tells us in the writings, is fully grown. You can now enter into the fiat voluntas tua, into the fullness of the likeness of God our Father. So this is the book that tells us the how it's going to happen or how it is happening for those, for all of us who have given our fiat voluntas tua, given our fiat. So he wraps his fiat around us. I know. Go back to, to the Mass. Lord, I'm not worthy for you to enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The word is fiat. The minute you give your fiat, he places his fiat, on, fiat upon it. Your soul has been healed and now can grow into the likeness of God. It's first the soul, then the body. We lost our... No, I just I, wanted, I thought I had that on my phone, but I just wanted to post something back here. And for anyone, Mary just mentioned this just so that I want to give you the writing um, about the, the this gospel. is the gospel, the gospel of the kingdom. October second, nineteen twenty-seven. Oh, you know it? I think it's October second, nineteen twenty-seven. How about August 23, 1928? Okay. <laughs> In the right century. Yeah. Pretty close. Yeah. Is that 1928? Right. So it's in, it's a just, if, if you want to write it down, anybody, in the reading of August 23, 1928, which is in volume 24, that's when he, he talks about these writings being the gospel of the scene. Mm -hmm. Which ties into Matthew's twenty-four uh, until the until the gospel of the kingdom comes. And they are being preached around the world. Thank you, internet. Thank you, YouTube. Yeah. Thank you, priests. Thank you, everybody who's traveled the world to to bring this knowledge there. It's it's at the four corners of the world. So the children are coming into uh, the kingdom. Can we read it? Yes. All right. So it's Philippians. We're starting with the scripture. Philippians chapter two, verses one through two. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any incentive of love, any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. When I read this, it, I read it in the context of if there's if, if you have any encouragement in Christ, any incentive of love, any participation in spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy, complete my joy, which is glory, by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. That just... Struck me. It's interesting. Haynes mentioned uh, last week about, uh, and, and this was this was the way that Jesus wanted me to work on this one. This time was if you take if you look at the catechism readings, there they are. Uh, uh, if your if your book is is an informative book on the catechism, then it's got ties in tie-ins with other catechisms that are in a similar um, a similar context, and then also at the bottom of the page. It's got footnotes on the various scriptures. So 
it made it kind of easy to take the glory concept from the catechism and go find yeah. uh, relevant um, uh, scriptures. And there were, there was probably 10 or 12, and I, I, I just I put four here. And in the future, the Book of Heaven will have the same footnotes going to scripture and catechism. So because this is hand in glove with all of our our forefathers of our church. And then and the next one is John, let me read this, John sure. 1. John, 14. John chapter one, verse 14. And, and to Hayden's point, that's what the theologians are working on now. So it's it's not like something that we're waiting upon. We've we've got the theologians in the church working on this now. They everything of this of these writings have been approved. Um it hasn't been given from the Pope that they are public revelation. It, like Fatima was, is, was made a public revelation. Lords is a public revelation. Um, and, and, and so many others, this will become public revelation, but right now it's still considered uh, private. Uh, 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 sorry. I think it's, you, you, you have to say it's a uh, recognized church, recognized private revelation. I think the term public revelation is only re reserved for the Bible. But it's recognized. Well, wasn't that right? a public revelation? No, no, no oh, it's, it's also a private it's also private revelation okay. that is recognized by the church and no no catholic is uh, has to believe in fatima no, that's, that's um, okay oh, okay yeah but you do have to believe in scripture thank you okay all right mm -hmm. i have to fix that in my brain so i say it correctly next time it'll be approved apparition um both private, private. proved private revelation which it has been just uh not everybody knows it. All right, chapter uh um gospel of John, um, chapter one, verse four. In him, oh, I'm sorry, 14. 14. Oh, 14. Right, we're almost right forward. And the word became flesh. Oh, we should be genuflecting. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory. Glory as the only begotten Son from the Father. Full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory. Glory is of the only begotten son from the father. Grace was his humanity. Truth was his divinity. Our lady was full of grace. And you to become by grace what they are by nature. And that's what this is saying. Glory is of the only begotten son from the father. So if the Trinity is full glory you become by grace what they are by nature. You too become the fullness of the glory, the inaccessible center of God. You don't just possess the divine will. You become. You're one in him, in him, in you. One, complete, as a child of God would be. That's incredible. We have beheld his glory. Glory is of the only begotten son from the Father. As at some point in time, all I say this, um, perhaps it's not necessarily the case, but I would assume it will be. Uh, uh, all all of us that are that are studying and wanting to learn about the divine will 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 come across and will hear the the we we heard it, it Tony Hickey was where I first heard this, but. Um, you know, ultimately, what are we wanting and trying to do in the operation uh, in the possession of, of God in the possession of God's will is to give to God what is due to God on the scale due to God on behalf of all creatures, past, present, and future. And what we're talking about is on that scale due to God, as, as to me at least, as we're talking about glory, is that that's that that likeness, the like for like ability to you can communicate with God as he wanted us and intended for us to communicate with him as Adam communicated with him before the fall. And, and, and the, the, this, this context of glory, ultimately, how, however, um, sometimes it can be difficult to say, wait a minute, that's pretty strong language. That's pretty strong position to be in, but that's what he tells us this is all about. So you have to take that as 
if God's telling us this is what it's all about, then we learn, we 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 implement, we become, and then we have to accept with a level of confidence that these things that he says are happening, seen and unseen, are actually happening. And, and that we are helping to bring about the return of the kingdom uh, and the bringing about the, you know, the first petition in the Our Father, a kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So. It's interesting that Paula found a song. I love that song. That and, awesome. and, and what is God doing in heaven? And what is That's God doing in heaven? Volition in heaven? As in heaven? Yeah, yeah, as in heaven. Glory, glory, light, glory. light, radiant, light. more, more radiant, more knowledge, more love. That's in heaven. I think, you know, this increase of glory all the time. And when we make our acts in the divine will, you know, we are we are um, generating these little lights that have the same substance of the light of God. So that's the glory on earth, you know, these light bolts, you know, <laughs> little, little suns, and they go all around in creature and to all people. It's, it's about to increase the glory on earth. So, oh man, that would be fun to talk about. <laughs> The seven day, the six days of creation. In the first, he said, "Let there be light. Yep. Let my glory shine through all. Let there be light, my glory." And then he went through the five days of creation to make it all ready for him to create man in his likeness and image. The greatness of that moment of creating us in the likeness and image of him. And you're right; we get to. Right now, just our little sons, all of our acts, little sons, just shining up all around the world to give him back the fullness of his glory of what he'd said in that first day of creation, let there be light. And we couldn't do this fully until we gave our, until he gave us the gift to access his center, which is the divine will. It, it's a... Ah, oh, your heart, you know, what you just read in, in scripture, you... Um, in Philippians, like that, not only the joy of the father, but none of us on this call. I mean, we're all waiting for that joy for all the earth to <clears throat> reflect that glory back to God, the father. That's our joy too. You know, it's, it's, uh, you know, the Psalm of David, it's our joy too, to, to have all of us united again, as we were in the womb of God before it played out in time. To, to be there all united again in the fullness of truth and grace. It, um, you just realize that it's just a blip in moment, whatever's happening, it's just a blip. Oh, soon we're going to be in the eternal womb of God forever and ever and ever. And this is just a little blip. All right, Psalm 8. I could talk forever. <laughs> Can you? Psalm 8. I know. But you're just, you get so excited. Like, you know, like you said, like, oh my gosh, we were chosen to live out in this time. Not only were we chosen, but when you read that reading of that everything happened in the womb of God, and then you read, he says, I force nothing. We ask you first, and we want your love, un unadulterated, unforced, freely given. We want your yes. So therefore you gave your yes in the womb of God to live during these times, to live as a child of light. Because he doesn't force you to do this. You said yes, and now you're going to live it in time. And that is just, you know, whatever's happening in the terrestrial, remember what you said in the celestial and that you're living it in the celestial. The terrestrial is just a blip in time. It doesn't matter from all eternity, God has called you to live as his child of light during these times, right. right now, to call all the brothers and sisters. It was something earlier you said, Mary is the mother of all, not the all from the moment of Christ's incarnation till the, till the end of time, all, mother of Adam and Eve, 
So you too are called to be the mother and, and maternity and paternity of all. Therefore, you go back to Philippians. Well, as a joy as a parent, what is the greatest thing as us as parents? When our family is all together, right? We're all sharing a meal. When we're all in harmony. So that's the joy that's in Philippians. And that's what St. Paul uh, is telling us. Like, be my joy. Come into come into the fullness of Christ. And now us as children of God, children of light during this time, we're saying the same thing. Come into the fullness of the light because you're our family. And we want to be at the banquet table together. Um, moving on. Psalm 8. <laughs> Psalm 8. Are we reading the whole psalm? Uh, I, I it, it's it was really, there's a section in here really um, with uh, uh, five, but the entire eight is not long, and I was going to go ahead and read the whole yeah. the whole one. That was that was the thinking. Can we read it? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Psalm eight. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory above the heavens is chanted by the mouth of babies and infants. You have founded a bulwark because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have established, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him little less than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. That's beautiful. And, and just quickly, as not quickly, but just to add in this last uh, Genesis 126, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And we've already just learned about the difference between image and likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And then you go back to what you just read in, uh, in Psalm 8. It's the recognition of that. You have given, starting with 6 through, uh, through 9, you have given him dominion over the works of your hands after you crowned him with honor and glory in, in verse 5. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, and the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. But that is, that's what Adam was. That's what it was, Adam was, was, was doing, was experiencing, was, was possessing. And um, that's how he made us. And that's how he wants to take us, what he wants to take us back to, that where, you know. So that's the lead in, if you will, for <laughs> May, that was more than a two minute intro, right? <laughs> May, you know, um, and uh, after Ad Adam lost it, and the first after Adam was our our blessed mother in in the womb, you know, she uh, she was running to all works of God to say, <laughs> "I love you," and they received her and made her her queen she's the queen of um of whole creation she's the queen of the sun of the wind of all and we are in her also back in this uh, place but in her yes she, she is the queen of whole creation i just read in volume 33 this morning that um you know she she uh when the gift became accessible she went and marked all of her children and because she's the queen and you're marked as her child, therefore the scourges cannot touch you because she is the queen. She's in command of all the scourges that are to happen. And it's it's volume 33, it's in the in the month of June, but uh in that in that volume, if you want to read it, 
but it's incredible because of who she is and how much she loves you as as a as her daughter as her children um thought i'd add that with it. your paula <laughs> her blessed mother all right oh, wait, mary she also keeps all of her children um safe from sin sure every day well, that's why you won't suffer the scourge because you're safe from sin. You're, you, you can't, scourges only come to those who are, are sinful and she's marked you. You can't, when you give your fiat, it's over. You've been blocked away. You can't, um, you can't sin, not voluntarily. You can do something involuntarily, but God says he covers for that. All right, moving on. October 13th, 1921. Let me just add that these writings, when you, when you look at what I have, printed on uh, each, beside each one of them about we glorify the Father in the different ways that these writings represent. It's not the actual uh, summarization that's on the uh, the actual writing itself, but but there is a there there is a this the messages from each one of these are coming from these writings. And I I to be completely transparent, I I I ran across uh, a uh, a segment of these writings from another uh, cynical and the, that I keep for reference and I, it was just sitting right there staring back at me and so they I pull I didn't pull all of them but right there but I used uh, I used several of them so um, want to want to be give give credit when credit is due on that as well but that's how God wanted me to work last yeah. night so. Okay, October 13, 1921 is in volume 13. October 13, 1921. Did you want to read that? Yeah, sure. I'm just, it's October 13, 1921. All of the words of Jesus are fonts which lead and spout toward eternal life. I felt oppressed thinking that I am forced to say and write even the tiniest things that good Jesus tells me. Then on coming, he said to me, my daughter, each time I speak to you, I intend to open a little fountain in your heart because all of my words are fonts which lead and spout toward eternal life. But so that these fonts may form in your heart, you must also put something of your own. That is, you must chew them thoroughly to be able to swallow them into your heart and open the font. Can I stop yeah. right there for a moment? The the the, the word chew he uses here. He the, the word masticate is also uh, words that you'll read in these writings. And the, the point of that is to mull them over, to spend time on them, to understand them. And and as he says here, um intend to open a little fountain in your heart. Uh, to, I'm sorry, that is you must chew third to be able to swallow them into your heart and open the fountain. So we've talked at times that, that, that it's very easy to read these writings to gain the information, to be able to go to this writing or that writing uh, and, and know that when he talks about a certain topic, you can go to another volume in writing. But the true ability to take these uh, these knowledges that are contained in these books is the ability to move them from knowledge into actual part of who we are, and 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 so that we possess them, we live we live from them. They are part of who we become. It's not just I know this or I can spout this. It's a matter of taking it and moving it into, uh, as, as I say, move it from your head to your heart. And he's he's talking about this here. It's it it in order for them to 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 for you to get the fruit and the benefits for that fount to open up, we have to we have to spend time on them. We have to come to an understanding, and then once we do, we 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 have to give our yes again and and move that in. And sometimes that can be a difficult thing as you learn a knowledge and you realize that you're going to be required to to. To, to change your lifestyle or rethink what you thought or something along those lines or whatever, however that manifests itself. But it's so important that that we we have the ability to, to take that knowledge and put it into action and put it into part of who we are. 
And that is the submission of our cynical is to have these kinds of conversations so that as we're all learning and reading and hearing and talking to one another, uh, something will click for one of us or two or eight or however many it happens to be that will that will provide meaning and say, I get that now and I understand it. And wow, I get it. And I want that. I want to be, I want it to be part of me. And I am, I am going to make it part of me. Yeah. So knowledge leads to understanding and understanding leads to wisdom. Yeah. And so we can read this, but God's like, I'm going to, you're going to read it, but then you got to experience it to have that fullness of the understanding, right? Because you could sit here and tell somebody how to drive a car, but until they get and drive the car, they don't know how to drive the car, right. no matter how many books they read. Um, and you're constantly learning because you're a constant student here on in on earth. And that's why he's saying, keep reading, keep reading, keep reading, keep opening up these fonts. And then you'll see them all in the fullness we enter into eternity. All right. I just see the word masticated in the yeah. next line. Yeah. Right? So. <laughs> and, and they're always changing, you know? I mean, we've been um, practicing this for seven, eight years. I have, my little soul has. And I swear, I feel like... Um, I know I've read them all before because they're all highlighted, but they always sound different. They, there's like another layer to learning and understanding that happens over time. And it is so personal. Um, it is Jesus teaching my soul what my soul needs today. So I just, I just love that part of the writings. By thinking about them over and over again, you form the mastication. By telling them to those who have authority over you, and as you are assured that they are my words, you swallow them with no doubt, and you open the font for yourself. And at the occurrence of, so, so she was able to tell her, I love this, think about this. She was able to tell her confessors. That's why God always sent her the confessor that would be disposed to receive these writings and understand what she's saying. What he has done for us, because, you know, we don't have a confessor coming to our house every day and uh, that we can read these readings to. He's given us each other. That's why our Saturday cynical is very important because if you don't have somebody to discuss this to, then how do you, by telling them to those who have authority over you, and as you are assured with they, that they are my words, you swallow them with no doubt, and you open the font for yourself. That's why it's good yes. to have cynicals. Yes. This is incredible. You, you, you swallow it down, and it, in speaking out the truth, the font is opened. Yes. It's wow. Yeah. <laughs> If you didn't you know, have it, yeah. Know. Always be it's so important that we speak about it. Yes. Yeah. Ten cynicals, as but also read. <laughs> By thinking about them over and over again, you form the mastication. By telling them to those who have authority over you, and as you are assured that they are my words, you swallow them and with no doubt, and you open the font for yourself. And at the occurrence of your need, you use them, drinking in large gulps from the font of my truth. By writing them, you open the channels which can serve all those who would like to quench their thirst so as to not let them die of thirst. I am the living water. Those who come to me will never thirst. Now, by not telling them, you don't think about them. And by not chewing them, you cannot swallow them. So you run the risk that the font will not be formed and that water will not spring forth. And when you need that water, you will be the first to suffer thirst. And if you do not write them, not opening the channel, then how many goods will you deprive others? Now, as I was writing, I thought to myself, it is some time that my sweet Jesus has not been speaking to me about his most holy will, but about other virtues. I feel more inclined to write about his most holy will. I feel more of a taste for it as if it was something exclusively mine and his will is enough for me in everything. And my always benign Jesus on coming told me, my daughter, you should not be surprised if you enjoy more and feel more inclined to write about my will. In fact, hearing, speaking, writing about my will is the most sublime thing which can exist in heaven and on earth. Could you read that again? In fact, hearing speaking, 
writing about my will is the most sublime thing which can exist in heaven and on earth. So I'm going to change the word to reading. In fact, hearing, speaking, reading about my will is the most sublime thing which can exist in heaven and on earth. It is that which glorifies me the most and takes all goods together and the whole of sanctity all at once. Wow. God's here. Yeah, yeah. It is that which glorifies me the most and takes all goods together and the whole of sanctity all of all at once. On the other hand, I'm going to stop there because it just that, that's Mary arriving at Elizabeth's house and, and St. John in the womb of Elizabeth leaves. He's sanctified there. That's what Jesus is saying. Just read. It is the sanctity of all sanctities. Nothing else. It's what gives him the most glory. And it's what sanctifies you is to read, write, uh, read, speak, and hear these words. And, and he says it. Yeah. He says it right here. So it, he says it. Why? Why do? Why is it we we think that? Because he says it. It is that which glorifies me the most. What is it? To write about my will. In fact, hearing, speaking, writing, reading. I'll add reading in there. That's me adding reading. Is about my will is the most sublime thing which can exist in heaven and on earth. It is that which glorifies me the most. It takes all goods together and the whole of sanctity all at once. Okay. So... He tells us in another reading, and I don't have it. Would love for you guys to look this up. Obviously, the seven sacraments that he gave us to our church were not enough. I mean, it is enough. It is enough. For redemption. For redemption. For, for sanctification. To, to be for sanctification. The tree is fully formed. But he tells us, he said, everybody be walking around as saints. If the virtues and living a virtuous life and living the sacraments was enough but it's the divine will that gives you the likeness as we have stated so put that together so we have been receiving the sacraments we have lived a virtuous life and he is now saying when you read these writings and you masticate upon them and you speak about them and you share them you give me the most glory the glory you glorify me the most and it's the whole of sanctity all at once. Masticate on that because it's what he's, you know, the tree is grown. On the other hand, the other truths would each enclose its own distinct good. They are drunk sip by sip, climbed step by step, and they adapt to the human way. With my will, instead, it is the soul that adapts herself to the divine way. It is not sips that she drinks, but sees. Not stairs that she climbs, but flights that she takes toward heaven in the twinkling of an eye. Oh, my will, my will, by just hearing it from you, it brings me so much joy and sweetness and as I feel surrounded by my will contained in the creature, as if by another immensity of mine, I feel such a taste that it makes me forget about the evil of the other creatures. You must know that I have manifested to you great things about my will, which you have not yet chewed well and digested in such a way as to take all the substance and form the whole mass of blood in your soul. Once you have formed all the substance, I will come back again and I will manifest to you other things, more sublime about my will. And as I wait for you to digest them well, I will keep you occupied with the other truths which belong to me, so that if creatures do not want to make use of the sea of the son of my will in order to come to me, they may use little fountains and channels to come to me 
and take for their own good the things that belong to me. You must know that I have manifested to you great things about my will, which you have not yet chewed well and digested, but only on volume 13, in such a way as to take all the substance and form the whole mass of blood in your soul. Once you have formed all the substance, I will come back again and I will manifest to you other things more sublime about my will. I think it's that word manifest versus teaching. Right. And as I, because you can't, he won't manifest a, a knowledge, manifest a knowledge until you fully accepted the knowledge he's giving you um, at that time. The blue screen popped up. Sometimes you'll read these readings. We've said this before, and it's oh, and, and, and it's it's what he's saying here. Sometimes you read these readings, and you're like, I have no idea what you just said to me. No idea what that means. And he said, okay, just keep chewing it. I'm going to give it to you more in another writing or further along the way, or something's going to happen to you, and then you will understand. And then it has been manifested to you. And, and that was something that Father Brown always used to talk about too, that, that there's going to be, especially early on, is there's going to, he's going to say things and you're, like you just said, you're going to go, because I did, I know I did a lot. What the heck is, is he telling me? What is he trying to say to me? And he, and he, and Father Brown always used to say, just by reading, you're getting something. And don't, don't, don't be, uh, don't give her clipped. Don't say to yourself, "I ah, this is too much for me." You 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 just take it and go, and take it and go. And then, as you said, the next thing you know, a week, uh, a month later, he's going to have a, you're going to get to another reading where he's going to talk in a similar way, but he's going to change it up just a little bit, and you're going to get a little bit more from it. And even even as you are thinking through and trying to masticate on it, sometimes. It's I know it's like having a, a New York strip with a whole lot of gristle in it. Sometimes you just got to keep chewing and chewing and chewing on it, right? But it's uh, uh, but eventually it'll it, the, the, and you'll know it. You know it the moment it happens. It just it clicks. Yeah. And that it's like you know it's like the locksmith you know blowing the lock apart. And just it's turning and it opens and it's like I now I got it. And it's from all of the chewing that has happened before. And as as Haynes mentioned, it was it, it, it it's not only do you you chew it and you understand it, he'll come back to you again, and because you've chewed it, you will have an understanding, and then what he tells you will add to it, and it'll take you to a different level of understanding, and it keeps building. That's why no no reading is ever the same after you read it the first time. There's always a different reaction. You always pick up a little different something from every time you read it's because you have the knowledge of everything that's come before that reading at that time and it builds and builds and builds and this is also the entry of heaven on earth you know that word manifest mary it's um manifesting that that is divine in human terms you know so these words are very visceral he's using food mm -hmm to um, convey to us just how much this needs to belong to our physical world. These um, lofty, intensely divine thoughts need to have some basis of concrete physical absorption that, um, that comes through these writings and it comes through little by little. Um, and it's constantly morphing, just as we never finish reading scripture, we never finish reading the Bible, we'll never finish understanding who God is, because we're starting to learn who God is here on earth, because this is what we'll be doing in heaven for all of eternity, is glorifying the Father. So anyway, um, I always just find that the process is so revealing and so intense sometimes that I'm reduced to tears um, with, yeah, Paul is smiling. Yeah, I'm reduced to a puddle of tears sometimes by reading what he's telling me that he's giving me because I just don't understand how immense love is. And it is, it's beyond 
our human understanding. And there we go back to, I'm going to love my brother with your love, God, because right. my human love is nothing. Right. It's also with... Um, Somebody else? Paul? Someone else want to talk? Paul, you had your hand up? Yes, I, I like to, to um, share something about this sentence. And as I feel surrounded by my will, contained in the creature, as if by another immensity of mine. Hmm. You know, um, God is speaking through, creature to, through creation to us. And he created first space and time, an immensity to put all creation inside it, yeah? That's like hmm? space and time, boom. And space is talking about God. Space is talking about God, its immensity, and it's talking about God because God is a point. And each point in space has only one uh, attribute, I am here. And this is very close to the name of God. You know, this is the only, you know, only what is a point can say about itself. I am here. I am and I am here. Okay, immensity, very big. Then we look on the soul. The soul is in this body and this has a border. But if you look on the soul, on this space of the soul, this is our body, then there is the same immensity concerning the points. It's also infinite. You know, it's like, you know, God shows us, you know, it, it's no difference. The space around us has the same infinite number of points as the space of our body mm. you can always dive deeper deeper you all if you have two points you always find another in between deeper 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 so it's the same has the same um in i don't know in it's the same kind of infinite mm. oh, that maybe it's a little bit abstract but uh, I was reminded it's the same, and so I understand it's the same immensity. Also, it's a, a only small creature. It's the same immensity, or in the whole creation, in the body, it's the same immensity. There it we speaks go. Of, hmm? uh, some uh, maybe it's a bit <laughs> abstract, but. Um, I understood. Yeah. I totally understand. The, the the space, when you look at space, it's infinite. And when you look into your soul, it's infinite. And you can go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper that you're never going to reach the end, but you're always learning more and more about God and seeing more and more of God within your soul. And that's what he's saying in this writing is that each one of my words it's in your it's in your soul therefore it's the sanctity of all sanctities you can't go into that um you can't dive into your soul and see the immensity of god into it unless it has been sanctified as god is the sanctity itself because you wouldn't be able to enter mm -hmm. because nothing unholy can enter into it so you you can just sit there and just just dive into your soul which you all have done that's true contemplation when you dive into your soul and you go deeper and deeper and deeper into the womb of God. And there's no end. The only one who stops it is you when you stop wanting to learn, read, speak, attend cynicals, whatever, when you stop it. But God doesn't stop it. And it's never, it's endless. You know, like he says about the light of the sun, it's, it, it'll never, it, it'll never diminish no matter what the atheists say, it'll never diminish or go away. It's infinite. It's sun, just because it's shown today on, on April 27th, 
2024. It'll be just as bright on April 24th, 19 or April 27th, 19 or 2025. Can't get my decade right. 2025, 2026, 2027. It'll never diminish. And that's why he uses the image of the sun to show you, just as Paula said, your soul is infinite, filled with those suns. They will never diminish. They keep going. And how far do you want to dive into the deepness of the ocean of the sea of my divine will to find out more and more? And when you think you've gained something, remember, it's just a speck in the whole immensity of God that you'll never. That's why we have all eternity to learn about God. Right. And because. He, he, even though we attribute, you know, we give Adam had dominion, we kind of give him that that pass of okay, well then Adam had everything. Well, in the in the in, in the writing, Jesus tells Louisa that Adam didn't have everything. He he had what he was given, and he used he knew how to use what he was given. But there was more for him to learn. There was, and there's there's in in some of the writings about uh, about. Heaven, they, he talks about, there's always learning going on. It, it will never cease. It will never stop. It's also, we read this last week, God isn't done creating. He hasn't dispersed all the seeds that he had created in all of creation. There, there are things we have not seen. I, eyes have not seen. No eyes have seen here on earth, but God has got planned when the kingdom comes and he lays down all the seeds, the flowers, the colors, the fruits, the magnificence of what we are about to enter into. So this is all that Adam knew. This that we see is all that Adam knew. It's what Mel just said. Even Adam didn't know the fullness of it because God did not finish the completion of creation as he is holding back until the kingdom comes. That was that reading we read last week. I believe that was a reading we read last week. Maybe it was a reading I read last week. I think it was a reading we read last week. Anyways. All right. All right. Let's uh, add something. You talk about masticating. His name's Jeff. <laughs> what? Oh, man. That's kind of <laughs> name tag on it. Sorry I'm late. <laughs> but I always get something, even if I'm here for five minutes. Uh, but I, I really enjoyed this thing you talked about masticating and the importance of knowing what he's trying to tell us, the truths that he's trying to get us to chew on and, and to digest. And, and then he talks about the importance of telling them to others. Uh, and that if you don't, you're going to be the first one who dies of thirst, so to speak. And you're preventing these others from being able to quench their thirst. So it's important that not only do we masticate on these and learn these from, for ourselves, but for the glory of him, we need to understand and know them so that not only do we not starve ourselves of thirst, but we also quench the thirst of others because we know that Jesus on the cross said, I thirst. So we need to satisfy his thirst. Yeah. And I love the way that he uses this chewing and, and masticating and as a visual, because when you think about regular nourishment for our bodies, we chew we drink, but we we then swallow as he as he mentioned in the writing, and then what happens? It gets dispersed and it is absorbed through all of all of our body, and we take the nutrients from it. As of these writings are the same way when we when we absorb them into our our soul, as opposed to the inner workings of our body, it's the same thing that happens: is that it gets dispersed, and that, and that's. We talk about you know moving from the head to the heart. We're, we're 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 taking that swallow because we want now all that we've learned to become dispersed in our soul, and we we operate from that. You know we we change the, our mode of operation into operating from these knowledges, and which for the knowledges of His divine work, we get stronger. Yeah. So our next reading, the fiat, the fiat is a spoken word. And so the truth has to be spoken as well. Hmm. All right, I'm, I'm looking out on the TV screen here for us, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask if somebody out on Zoom would like to read this next reading, which is in volume 19. 
It's March the 14th, 1926. March 14, 1926. Can someone please read that for us? Nadira, you want to read? Uh, yeah, I just have to find it. Sorry. I'm looking at this title. It says, one who lives in the divine will must be the voice of all created things. Because I think sometimes he says the speaking is about being the voice of all created things. Because as much as we'd love to tell everybody in the pews at our yeah. at our churches and schools yeah. and so forth, if they're not disposed to be disposed to live in the divine will, you're just hitting a brick wall. And God, the Holy Spirit, will tell you who to speak to and who who not to. But then He gives you cynicals to sit there and speak to to others because you know, as we had said before, you know, Louisa had a priest that came to her house and she was she had to tell him what was written and was given to her, so it was given to the church. But God knows, you know, not everybody around. I mean, my spouse isn't here. Who who would be first, right? Yeah. Who'd be the first person you would tell, but your spouse, yeah. your children. And so I just know it's not, it's not that, you know, as somebody said, it's it's you know, it it, it does it has doesn't have anything to do with their salvation. And uh it doesn't have anything to do with their salvation because they will be saved. Um, but it is that they're not disposed to be disposed to live in the divine will. Okay, but he doesn't, I, I just, let's turn this a little bit as well. He tells us in the writings that if you live in the divine will, your house is a refuge. So everybody who lives in your house is part of the refuge of the divine will, the sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary. And if you're reading the passion, your neighborhood's taken care of, your cities are taken care of and so forth. So it's it's you know it's the children of light you come in and do what you're supposed to do read masticate swallow live the divine will and not worry about your loved ones because god's taking care of them that's what mel had said you stand in front of the trinity your eyes on the trinity reflecting back to the trinity the fullness of glory love honor blessings thanksgiving and praise their eyes are on your family who is behind you. The minute you turn around and start taking your, worrying about your family, the, the this and the, the that, and are they going to make it? And oh my gosh, you know, they've left the church. They're living in, in whatever way. You've taken your eyes off. Then, then those eyes are not on the Trinity. He wants the children of light eyes on the Trinity and our Trinity and our blessed mother and Louisa will take care of those behind us that is the hardest thing for disposition it can be hard or not i'll obviously god gives you the grace to do it but the world terrestrial will sit there and well what about your kids what about your kids what about your kids well what about your kids well what about your grandkids well what about your sister what about your brother what about your spouse and the trinity is like just keep your eyes on me fullness of trust trust beyond reason the reason human reason you're trusting beyond your own human reason to live with the divine reason and the divine reason tells you in these writings i'm taking care of them if you're you just read that when you read one word sanctifies you mary walked into elizabeth's house fully living in the divine will one word of hers did what sanctified john the baptist in the womb of elizabeth blessed are you who believed because the baby inside my womb left it's that trust that we come to understand so it's we become the voice yes all of creation because why we're standing in front of the trinity keep your hands on the plow exactly the furrow, just don't look back. exactly <laughs> don't look <laughs> back don't go back there god's got them and there's nothing for you to worry about he needs you to do what you're doing so the kingdom can come and the kingdom comes when you this first line are the voice of all created things Yes, yes, and the, you know the we are uh, if if we check or reading and understanding and speaking, this radiance, this glory is is 
starts to bigger and bigger in us. And this radiance is like an umbrella. And if it's, you know, the more we dive into it, the more we speak, to the more fountains come up, the, the bigger the umbrella is. And so the, our family is under it. And our this is really the refuge. And this is again in the heart of Mary. So all children of um, redemption, it's great if they um, have their refuge in the heart of Mary. But we are, um, are taking part of building this umbrella. It's an umbrella of light, and the evil one has no chance to go into it, except it's freely given, you know. You know, uh, Jesus would not never have been crucified if he had said, no, it's freely given, you know, if you suffer. Uh, there is no, it's only free if it's... Uh, but then you have this umbrella, and 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 it enough. The, the 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 Satan doesn't fear anything so much than the divine love. Mm -hmm. It's like hell for him to come close to this radiance. You know, it's interesting. I think uh, we've we've seen some of what Mary talked about in. <clears throat> uh, um, folks that have uh, been part of uh, groups over over the years that um, have a, a very um, tough time detaching from whatever it is they are attached to and as as I don't know what it, Jeff said it loud enough while Mary was talking about keeping the eyes on, on God and the arms open and Jeff said it's like like watching that plow and keeping it in the furrow. When you're watching the pal and keep it in the furrow, you don't love your family any less, mm -hmm. right? You love right. them more. In fact, you love them more. More love and, that you can never have loved them and, before. And the world is wanting to beat you up and judge you for keeping your eye on the plow, but that's not what's going on interiorly. And it's the same thing from a what Mary was talking about with the example of the family is that you're 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 focusing on the trinity and and it doesn't come at the expense of not loving this that or the other anything any less in fact it is more but it is the trust that we talk about a lot that we uh that we discuss a lot that we pray about a lot that, that we recite a lot in whatever form or fashion that might take but it's the belief the difference is the belief that that's what's going on, and 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 you 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 study and become part of this long enough, and you recognize you you just recognize all these things that are going on. And and uh, Ricky, if I may, just use your example that, that from the, from today. I'm sorry about that, <laughs> but you know, Ricky was talking about since he started started these studies and and has and has. Is like all of us are. He's he's taking it by the fire hose coming in. He's seen things happen to him. We were talking about it earlier. He's seen things happen to him from 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 people and events that are completely turned and they're changed from the way people used to interact with him. And uh, and and it and it's God's got God's taking care of all of these yeah. things. It doesn't mean everything is going to be like hunky dory and we're all in moving our hands back and forth. But it's the knowledge and the confidence that God takes care of. It actually is the hunky dory, your hands are moving back and forth. But it's not as the world was telling you that it was hunky dory, it's the world turning, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah. And those who are living of their will, even 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 our our great friends in the church or holy communities that we are in before, because they don't understand, it's the acceptance that God is in control of everything, is which what I've gained from reading these writings more and more and that's where the trust comes in because god knows the situation better than i do better than i can even think and how do it so as the world doesn't think it's hunky and dory you actually do see it as like oh it's perfect it's, it's yeah. all god's plan yeah. what what can i you know it's all god's plan god's got this yeah. of course he's got this no need, for anxiety. no need for anxiety stress depression all that other stuff it is so taken care of and it's exciting because as i said before 
you know, you, when you come into the Fiat Voluntas, when it is time, you will know the full attributes of all of creation when you need to know them. I don't need to know what some plant in Arizona, that's a cactus, what it's doing in its attribute. It's not time to know that information. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like he'll give it to you when it's that time. That's the trust. I don't have to have all of this knowledge of all the attributes now. That's not what I depend on. I depend on my nothingness. And when it is time to know, because in my nothingness, God will give it to me. And if there's something to do for my family and friends, what am I stressed or anxiety or any of those other things where, which is oppression from the evil one, I don't need to. He'll tell me when it is time what to do and how to do and, and what to do. Did I say that already? Yeah. He'll tell <laughs> you. And, and, and this will be this new outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You yes. Know? It, we will know. Pentecost, it'll be the new Pentecost that we're all waiting upon. Absolutely. Mary, can I just cut in for a second? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, first of all, as a side note, I know about uh, Arizona. I lived oh. there for 15 years, but now I live in Florida. Uh, different different geographical uh, plants and everything. It's pretty cool. But what I wanted to say was there's a couple things that you have said so far. Um, and don't ask me to recall them because my brain doesn't function like that. Like if it's like 10 seconds ago, it's gone. But the thought that came to me was, it seems like the divine will writings were written for our time to truly understand a whole new level of the Holy Scriptures. Because some of the things that you're saying, I'm all of a sudden I'm going back to scriptures that have now opened themselves up to us. And I find that very, very fascinating. Thank you. No, Ricky, it's it's um, you will enjoy reading scriptures more because now you have this gift of the Fiatalunas to it, and you see it in like a whole uh, the same light but a different light. So last week we were talking about Peter and being on the shore, and when Jesus says, "Peter, do you love me?" because we were talking about blessings. Peter, do you love me? And he asked Peter that three times, and after those three times, and Peter said yes. God gave him his mission. And so Jesus tells us in these writings, the more you love me, the more I'll give you what your mission is, which is part of this reading that Nadir is going to read is that your mission. And who's not excited about getting a mission from God, our father? No one, no one. And we all want to know our mission from God, the father to, 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 to the, you know, just the enormity of it. And we've all discussed that scripture is, yeah. is a whole new, you might have read the Bible before, but you've never read the Bible when you had the writings of Louisa Picaretta and scripture together. It opens it up. It's a whole different understanding because it's the understanding of it in the eyes of sanctification versus just the eyes of redemption. And the catechism. And the catechism. <laughs> you understand the catechism on a whole different light than even, you know, even read the church fathers or so forth. You can go through anything because that's why Jesus says they all hold hands and they are now complete with the writings of Louisa Picaretta to complete the trinity of scripture, catechism, and the writings. And I, when I say catechism, I mean the church fathers, all of our tradition and so forth. The mass is so much, we've always loved the mass, but now you go to mass and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm. it's opening up to you and so forth. So yeah, it's, it's uh, and so he said, you, you can't put this down. Go ahead, Christy. Uh, Oh, sorry. yeah, it, it's um, it's kind of like for me, like the peeling of the oven or, or peeling away my human will, you know, and uh, little by little, God has been doing different things. Like I, uh, I stopped listening to the radio in the car. Um, I'm self-employed and, um, you know, I just turned it all over to God. So if, you know, I lose a client, you know, following week, I seem to get a new one. It's just kind of amazing. And uh, lately, the other thing I'm doing, I'm totally relying on him for this is um, I don't use my alarm clock anymore. So I'm like, God, you know what time I need, you think I should get up? That's when I'll get up. So I'll I get up anywhere between 4.30 and 7 o'clock. And uh, it's amazing how all this is happening. So just very little by little, you know, um, it sure has increased my my trust because, you know, that's the subject you were talking about a little bit ago. And that's, uh, you know, when you said that, I thought, oh, yeah, all these things that I'm doing, um, you know, are bringing me closer and closer to the divine will. And I'm just uh, really excited. And, and this month is actually a whole year since I started 
um, you know, um, reading um, the Louisa and trying to understand the divine will. I think I joined you guys in June, but April is actually when I um, started. And it's interesting because I was baptized in April, April 12th. And I think it was right around then that I'm like, you know, the divine will, like, oh, this is what God wants me to do. So, um, yeah, so it's just, uh, yeah, it's just been a, a wonderful journey so far. And I really um, like being in your Senecal and I appreciate Aww. all of you and your input. So thank you. Yeah, love having you. Josephine. Josephine. Uh, yes, thank you. I'm just, I just have like a salad of thoughts in my mind from every wonderful thing that I've heard but the one word that i'm taking home today is the word masticate because it's just so awesome how god can come down and use an everyday banal you know action like masticating like eating but it also occurred to me like uh, the comment about understanding scripture and what ricky said and uh that we read all these things and it can be overwhelming it can be daunting but the masticating like you all explained to me reminds me that my own saliva mm -hmm. the chemicals in my own saliva can begin to interact with the with the compounds in a in every specific food right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. new compounds are broken down or released that i'm not even aware of so i'm thinking like uh ja, you know john said that you can just keep reading it and not and not be uh, overwhelmed about it and say that, oh, it's not for me, it's too much for me, but it's in the reading. And also, especially in concentrating on just chewing and masticating and letting all those interactions in my mouth happen so that all the, even unknown to me, compounds in the food I'm eating, specific, specific, specifically in every specific food item, which contains different uh, compounds or nutrients like every single food or word that I might be thinking about can actually give me understanding that eventually later on in the gaps of daily life like what Paula said looking at the stars at sky every night or coming upon an unexpected unexpected grace which I call as a love bomb bomb from the father <laughs> that, that things finally are put together in my mind because Miss Haynes said how the abstract and immense, you know, knowledge and love that God wants to give us, but will take forever, like Mary said, to learn in heaven, that I can begin to put them together, you know, in every act, in every moment of the day in just daily life like making a wrong turn and i see a butterfly i've been looking for mm -hmm. that all of those are acts of love you know in me with me with the father meet me in the in the holy trinity in the divine will yep. right. Not awareness so yeah. thank you all the Nadira, if if you haven't found it by now, I can't do anything else to help you find that. Find that, uh, that I found it. I found it. Okay. March 14, 1926. One who lives in the divine will must be the voice of all created things. In order to fulfill this office, the soul must be newly born in the divine will. The great difference that exists between one who is newly born in the divine will in time like the celestial mama and the one who is reborn in the divine will at the thresholds of eternity. I continue to dissolve myself in the holy divine will. I would like to embrace everything and everyone to be able to bring everything to my God as my own things given to me by him as gifts in order to give him for each created thing, a little word of a love, a thank you, and I bless you and I adore you. And my always lovable Jesus came out from within my interior and with his omnipotent fiat, he called the whole creation in order to place it on my lap, to give it to me as a gift. And with tenderness, all love, he told me, my daughter, all is yours. For one who must live in my will, everything which came out of my will and which my will preserves and possesses must be fully hers by right. 
Now it was my omnipotent fiat that extended the heavens and studded them with stars. My fiat called the light to life and created the sun, as well as all the other created things. And my fiat remained inside the creation as triumphant, dominating and preserving life. Now one who has won the divine will has won the whole creation and even God himself. Therefore, by right of justice, she must possess all that my will possesses. More so since the creation is mute for its creator, and I made it mute because the one to whom I was to give it and who was to live in my will would herself have speech in all created things, so that all things made by me might be speaking, not mute. So you will be the voice of the heavens, and echoing from one point to another, it will make your word heard, which resounding through the whole celestial atmosphere will say, I love you, I glorify you, I adore you, my creator. You will be the voice of each star, of the sun, of the wind, of the thunder, of the sea, of plants and of mountains, of everything, repeating continuously, I love you, I bless you, I glorify you, I adore you, I thank you, one who created us. Oh, how beautiful will the, be the voice of my newborn, of my will, of the little daughter of my volition, in all things. It will render the whole creation speaking, and creation will be more beautiful than if it had given it the use of the word. I love you so much that I want to hear your voice in the sun, loving. Loving you so much that I want to hear your voice in the sun, sorry. Loving, adoring, glorifying. I want to hear it in the celestial spheres in the murmuring of the sea, in the darting of the fish, in the bird that sings and warbles, in the lamb that bleats, the turtle dove that moans. I want to hear you everywhere. I would not be content if all created things in which my will has first place, I did not hear the voice of my little newborn, who rendering the whole creation speaking, gives me love for love, glory and adoration for each thing created by me. Therefore, my daughter, be attentive. I have given you much, and much do I want. Your mission is great. It is the life of my will that must be carried out in you, which embraces everything and possesses everything. Yeah. Can you stop? Then stop. after this, I was thinking to... Adira, can you sure. stop there for a second? Yeah. Going back to a paragraph a couple uh, before... That starts with now it was my omnipotent fiat that extended the heavens and the earth. If you go down several lines, now one who has won the divine will has won the whole creation and even God himself. Therefore, by right of justice, she must possess all that my will possesses. And because the divine will possesses all of creation that we talk about, by rights, children of the divine will also possess creation. And that possession comes with a responsibility in that there's a recognition that you are speaking for the trees and the birds and the fish and the rocks and, and everything that has been created by God. As he said, he purposely did not give them a voice because the intention was for us as creatures to be the voice for all creation because all creation was put in place for us. And so that it's a it's a it's an idea, it's a it's a it's a truth that is it comes slowly to come to an understanding, as many of these do, to say, you mean you mean I can do that? You mean he wants me to do that? You mean I get to do I, that? I get to do that. And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. And when you Go through that. There's a there's a, a conversion. I mean, you give your yes. You want to be part of this. You want to learn about it. Your intention is to is to to go the the full route. But you're still learning as you go along, and you go. Well, first of all, you go. I I can't believe that he wants me to do this, and then I can't believe that I am doing this. And it's and it is it it's. It's part of what happens as as we progress through, as I like to say, to go further out and deeper down in the sea of the divine will. There's just things that happen that you you recognize are part of what God does, and 
and, and you move yourself from being, I mean, credulous at that to to changing your tune of, of being not from incredulous to being, man, I give glory for that. I, you mean, that is inc it's incredible. It's different. I'm trying to make a distinction between incredulous and say incredible, but nonetheless, it is it is something that's just it it becomes understandable and and all these things that are talked about that are of a celestial nature you recognize you're seeing you're part of and it's that it's a it's just what happens and so we we sometimes we, we get scared that that may be you know louisa several times says i can't believe that i'm doing this or you want me to do that and he says absolutely and then you go well okay yeah. And, and, and that's what happens and you know he he gives us all of this creation and and all he's really wanting is for us to be in a relationship a loving relationship with him and it's us responding with awe number one that he he doesn't give speech to all of creation he gives it to us and he's trying to draw out of us speech for them to to basically have us recognize what he's done for us and then giving him the love, the glory, and the adoration that he seeks in this relationship. But it is pretty cool how you can speak for a star. You know, you can speak for mm -hmm. every little thing. A tick. It, it, yeah. Every little creature, everything that is inanimate, you can speak for it. Yeah. And it gives God glory. It gives him your love. He recognizes how much you love him back by allowing us to have that word for them. That's and under this context of glory, I guess as we're kind of working our way through it this week, it it, it is it is a natural occurrence from just operating and possessing the divine will. It happens. It, it, while he, you know, he talks about uh, us giving love, honor, and glory for for acts and actions, and what we what we do from a mission standpoint, as we see the the things that 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 need to be repaired, the acts that need to be repaired. But by virtue of just operating in that, that's happening incessantly. That glory, that 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 gift of that return back to him. Okay, thank you, Nadiris, for indulging me. Yes, I know somewhere I've read that um, that the Blessed Mother had enveloped all of creation to give, you know, Jesus all glory, adoration in creation to make him happy. I think when he was a little infant um, uh, born to make him happy. Um, anyway, then after this, I was thinking to myself, how can I do all that Blessed Jesus tells me? Being present in all created things, having one act for everything that the supreme volition does, as if it were to be my echo and I its echo, if I am just newly born in the divine will. I should at least grow a little bit to be able to diffuse myself a little bit more, as best I can, in all created things, as my beloved Jesus wants. Now, while I was thinking of this, he came out from within my interior and told me, my daughter, do not be surprised if I tell you that you are the newborn of my will. You must know that my Immaculate Mama herself is the newborn of my will, because in comparing what the Creator is and what the creature can be and take from God, she can be called a little newborn. And because she was the newborn of my will, she was formed in the likeness of her Creator and could be queen of all creation. And as a queen, she dominated everything, and her echo ran well with the echo of the divine will. And not only the celestial sovereign lady, but all saints, angels, and blessed can be called just newly born in the eternal volition. In fact, as soon as the soul leaves her mortal body, she is reborn in my will. And if she is not reborn in it, not only can she not enter the celestial fatherland, but she cannot even be saved because no one enters the eternal glory if one is not a birth from my will. However, I must tell you that of great difference that exists between one who is the newborn of the supreme will in time and those who are reborn at the thresholds of eternity. One example is my queen mama, who was the newborn of the divine will in time. And because she was newly born, she had the power to make her creator descend upon earth. 
and while he was still immense, she made him become little within her maternal womb, to clothe him with her own nature and to offer him as the savior of the human generations. By, be by being newly born, she formed seas of graces, of light, of sanctity, of science, in which to contain the one who had created her. By the power of the life of the supreme will which she possessed, she was able to do everything and to impetrate everything. God himself could not deny what this celestial creature was asking for, because it was his own will that was asking, to which he could not and should not deny anything. So one who is newly born in my will in time forms seas of graces while being in exile, and upon departing from the earth she carries with herself all the seas of the goods which the divine will possesses, and therefore she carries with her God, her, with her God himself, to bring from one exile that will, that God who reigns in heavens is a portent. Let me read that again. To bring from the exile that will, that God who reigns in heavens is a portent. You yourself cannot comprehend clearly the great goods, the prodigies of one who is newly born in my will in time. Therefore, of all that I tell you, you can do everything, more so since my will itself will do it, as though identified with your little being. On the other hand, for one who is reborn in my will upon departing from the earth, it is the divine will that makes her find its immense seas to make the soul be reborn in it. She does not carry her God with herself. It is God that makes himself found by her. What a difference between the two. Therefore, greater grace I could not give you than making of you the newborn of my will. And if you love to grow, let my will alone grow. That makes me think of the last catch and that one yes to the divine That's will that you have exactly to give. Right. Exactly right. It made me think of August 15th and the Assumption of Our Lady. And this explains why well, to be known as the gift of the divine will. Because it wasn't just Jesus that carried her up to heaven. She carried God up to heaven. And that is the living in the divine will that this reading just explained. It's not heaven coming down just to get her, but she brought heaven that was on earth in her up to heaven. You know, she does not science. carry her God with herself. It is God that makes himself found by her. That's at the that's one that's at the yeah. reborn at on the, the verge of eternity. To bring from the exile that will that God who reigns in the heavens is a portent. All right. So one who is newly born in my will in time forces the seas of grace while being in exile. And upon departing from the earth, she carries with herself all the seas of the goods which the divine will possesses. And therefore she carries with her God herself. So Go ahead. The, the Feast of the Assumption will be known as the Feast of the Divine Will because she brought God from the exile into heaven. It's it's the, I, I so can't it's, put it's, it right in words when I'm thinking in my head. So, so explaining just a little bit, the, the coming from exile means coming from earth. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's earth. And for, to me, what he's, what he's trying to tell us is, is that when, when one comes to understand about the divine will, comes to accept it and, and desire it and learns to live from it. What we know is that with that intention, uh, that constant every moment intention of, of wanting to operate in the divine will, then, then uh, Jesus does the work. And by virtue of doing that, we are creating divine acts. We are generating, generating divine acts. And those divine acts is what she's talking about that accompany uh, our soul to heaven. And because those acts are divine, God is in those acts. We take God back up to heaven through those acts. As Nadira mentioned with the last catch, it the last catch is that that as I like to say, it's the it, it, it's another the other way of looking at the labor, the parable of the laborers where. God is if if they want to work, no matter what time they come to the to the job site, he'll put them to work and he pays them the same thing. So 
when we when as we were passing and we're on the deathbed, we know th from the writings that that Jesus and Mary are there, and all it, it just takes one act, one act in the divine will to to gain entrance into heaven, and that can be the acceptance of your death as an act of the divine will. But when you're when you're coming into it at that point at that point. There's, you don't have acts behind you like the children of, the, of, of light have while their time is here on earth. And so they, God presents himself there again one more time because we know he, God's always running after them, right? After, 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 after anyone to be able to, to, to create that relationship with him. So there's a differential between operating, possessing on this side of death and, and, and generating and repairing acts and you it, you bring that forward you into in, uh, in, in into into the um, yes celestial world. We go back to what Paul had said earlier. Let's go back to there. When you enter into your soul, there's only the one prime act. Which she brought into heaven was the one prime act. Same as when our Jesus ascended into heaven, he brought the one prime act which all divine lives from all the acts that he repaired, redone, and reordered go into that one prime act of God. Go back to return to God, to the state and order in which God had created it, all of our acts, the prime act of God. So we say acts plurally, but not to get confused. All acts go into just what? The one prime act of God when he said, fiat, let there be light, and creation began. The one prime act of God. So Mary... When she was assumed, it wasn't, I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. I'm speaking out loud. So jump in with whatever you want. I'm not, I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. Our Lord came down to get her, but she already possessed the prime act of God. And so the, the two together, the assumption isn't just in our minds of just our Lord coming down, body and soul, taking her up to, to the heavens. She, of course, assumed, not ascended assumed he had to do that because she was uh, born. She is by grace, but they are by nature. She is not nature, God. He came down and got her, but she at that time took the full portent of God with her because she had completed all the acts in the prime act of God. And not just for her, but she did, repaired, reordered, and so forth. And it's almost like the Adam and the Eve together at the assumption, the divine will boom together uh, you know we know that it was always done but just the impact of the assumption is not just about mary going into heaven to live out the eternity it's about her taking the prime act of god with her into eternity it's it's i'm trying to put a title on it but it's that's why he says the august 15th will be known as the feast of the divine will because it's not just about god coming down to get her it's what she contained and what she had done, and in this writing, she says, when we die, when we die, those children of light die, we are bringing, we, we possess God, and therefore she carries with her God himself. I know I'm speaking out loud, I'm probably like going out in circles, so just bear with me, I'm trying to wrap my head around it. I understand it, but I don't know how to say it, so Paula. And and bringing God um, with her, so she's also bringing all the all the works of God, and it's like a she, she is. There's the sun outside and the sun inside. This sun and many other worlds inside. This creation is only one uh, outside, and she has it. This whole creation, she's the queen. Is in her soul. Because God is in her soul, so also the whole creation, and much more, because she is in this, um, she is in this generative power. She can make more seas of love, more suns, more stars, more beautiful flowers. You know, it's much more. Not only one, but she has this creation God did inside herself. There's a reading, Paula. Well, it's Martin, not, Martin. You can't tr tr separate it from God. No. To what you're saying, there's a reading. It's March, 18. So if you want to do a search on it, it's March, 18. And the children of light. So our Blessed Mother is Queen of Heaven and Earth, 
right? She's assumed in heaven because she's she's assumed because Jesus comes down to get her body, blood, soul, and divinity up into heaven. She is assumed. She brings all of creation with her. It's important to understand that when you read that reading, because he says, unlike children who do not live in the divine will, and they do say yes and give their one act, and they're living among the blessed, their acts that they're doing in heaven, because everybody thinks that you're not doing anything in heaven, but you're still doing acts in heaven, do not generate divine lies. But children of light yes. acts once you enter into heaven, because you're bringing God with you you are still generating divine lives in heaven with your acts. It's incredible yes. that, you know, you think of a Padre Pio or a, I can't say Padre Pio, uh, a St. Paul, the apostles, because they weren't given the gift. They're still doing acts in heaven, mm -hmm. right? That's why we ask for the intercession because they're still doing acts in heaven, but they don't generate divine lives. Our blessed mother was the first one called from the earth by the feast day will be known as the feast day of the divine will and when she's in heaven she's generating still divine lives same as children of light when they pass away we will still generate divine lives it's the same that you were doing on earth you're doing on heaven this writing is like the beginning sip of it to understand because you have god here you totally possess god and god totally possesses you so it's just a step over it's not even a it's you'll be doing the same thing. Oh my gosh. I, I'm just, that one line is going to feed me for a week. Be masticating <laughs> on it. <for> a week. <laughs> well, it's a vast difference. It's a vast difference of living um, in the sanctity of the virtues um, and versus living in the sanctity of the divine will. You You're know, right. Living in versus doing the will, you know? It's what's so fun about these cynicals when we go back into these readings, because this is volume 26. I'm in volume 33, and this is what date is it? Mike, March. It's what? Volume nine. It's volume nine. What I'm saying is, like, unless you're reading the dailies and you read this in March, it's always fun to come back and you read something and you're like, oh my, just what we had said. It's always new. I've read this before, it's been highlighted. It's always new. Haynes is texting. It's always new. <laughs> so, therefore, I'm just understanding more of it. Sorry, and I'm excited like I do, but uh, because I haven't masticated it all together to understand what God is saying to me. So this this resonates as that uh, laborers at five o'clock, someone who finally accepts his will upon leaving this life, upon exile from upon leaving this exile, living on earth. It's God who finds that person. And therefore, they are brought up. But the one who's living in the will, who's reborn in the will, and is doing and generating and living and producing the will, is he he says, what a difference between the two. And all the things that you mentioned as far as generating yeah. uh, the ability to do that afterwards. Yeah. Well, think about it. Divine lives are alive. Right? Divine acts mm -hmm. are, are acts generated, divine acts generated are live, are live acts. They never die. And so they never die. So when you're in heaven, they never die. They keep they keep living and being generated mm -hmm. as you bring them up to heaven. And they because they contain God, God comes with them. And and so the the last the last act of acceptance of of your death allows you to get into heaven, but you're not bringing anything with you. Mm -hmm. like, and so, as Mary said, we, we also know there's no sitting around eating bonbons in heaven. Yeah. There's work that goes on. I mean, there's uh, a... Yeah. You know, uh, Paula. We, we, you can also study this in nature. You know, they, they discard this fractal stru structures. You know, that the part contains, uh, it has a similar... Uh, um, shape as the whole. But this is an, this is a hint how God is that a part of God contains the whole or is like it's really in likeness of the whole. You know, each part we have it already in the church. You know, we say the church is uh, the bride of Jesus, and each member, each part is the bride of Jesus. Each parish is the bride of Peter. Jesus. So always the part, you know, that likes a part, um, contains 
all. This is a mystery. And, and, and in nature, it's like you, oh, you get some idea how the, the, to think about it. But the part contains always the all. This is in God, because when God, God is acting, acting yeah god is in his volition he's always um generative he's always creative and what he can create is nothing else as god mm -hmm. so the part what he's creating and what is part what is the work always contains all that's why if we say i love you this act in this act resonance all the other acts i adore you i bless you i i i i Thank you. It's all in this one. The part ha has always the others inside, but it's like a little bit more a certain flavor, flavor on it. But it's always, and this is, I think it's so amazing fract to study fractals, to understand it. You can zoom in fractals, infinite, never ending. Never ending this creation of another act, you know, never ending. And each act is always all. So, and I think the more I understand, I, I learn, the more I, I can uh, uh, understand uh, what I see in nature. You know, God is speaking in nature because he's speaking of himself in nature. He's speaking of himself. There's um, nothing in our creation that does not speak uh, of God, but we don't, you know, we are not um, ready to read it all, you know. That name, you need Holy Spirit for this. The and, blindness um, of humanity, um, Paula. It's so wild to me to think that humanity can't see what you're talking about right now, you know, what that God is speaking to us through nature all day long. Um, and uh, something about being reborn at the threshold of eternity, I like to think of as that's part of our cre our help to other souls by our living in the divine will so that other souls can have that opportunity to see Christ because they're so muddled and mired in blindness, unable to see God or know God as we are seeing and knowing God through living in the divine will. All right, thank you. I've got a question. Uh... I'm trying to see how far. So it looks like it's the next to last paragraph. Okay. In this last writing? Yes. Um, and it and it talks about Mary and the celestial mama and how she was formed in the likeness of her creator. And therefore it could be queen of all creation. And as queen, she dominated everything. Her echo ran well with the echo. Can you see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Of the divine will. And not only the celestial sovereign lady, but all saints, angels, and blessed can be called just newly born in the eternal volition. In fact, as soon as the soul leaves her mortal body, she is reborn in my will. And then it goes on to show something that is dark, that if she is not reborn in it, the will, not only can she not enter the celestial father, but she cannot be even be saved because no one who enters the eternal glory is one who is not a birth from my will. So he he groups Mary with the, the angels and the, the saints, the angels and the blessed and as newly born in the eternal volition. But hers happened at her immaculate conception. Right. So she was created in his likeness, whereas we were just kind of created in his image with the ability to be in his likeness. Correct. But with, because of the fall, we need to work towards the likeness. Right, because we're born of common stock. Right. 
And she was born of the Immaculate Conception. Okay, so this, the uh, so my question is, okay, she, he's mentioning the Mary and then the saints and the angels and the blessed. They all at the moment, well, the angels never left if they remain good. They never left, but they're angels. They're not, they're not yeah. soul, they're not human. Right. So they've never left the divine will from the moment that they were created. Satan did because he okay. fused. The blessed, the moment of their death, uh, they've given their fiat, their one fiat in the divine will of saying yes to their death. And that one act places, goes into the prime act of God, which enters into heaven. Okay. Right. And Mary gave this fiat at the moment of her conception. Well, yes, Mary, our Blessed Mother gave the fiat. She, she had always this free will also, but she gave her fiat and she said gave a second fiat um, that she will be the mother of the Redeemer. And then she gave her other her fiat. First... And then she gave her other fiat when she stood in front of Simeon and said that the sword of Pishar yes. as well. She gave her third fiat to be the suffering mother, our sorrowful mother. Yes. So she's, and then. So this last sentence, if she or he is not reborn in the will. They didn't give their act they to their never, death. They didn't. Yeah, they said so. Right. Yeah. Okay. Which are some people that will choose hell over right. living in heaven. Right. Mary is um, when um, Mary goes to heaven bringing the divine will essentially and freeing the souls and the angels and the not the angels but the saints essentially are receiving the divine will so is that when the divine will actually I mean I know that divine will is all of creation but there's three gifts of creation creation redemption and sanctification so is that the moment where the divine will is given to us on our or given to have back to heaven? Or I understand the question. Well, because Jesus ascended first, and so he ascended. We know when he ascended, he took all divines with divine lives with him and presented the Father all the divine lives. And our blessed mother also did the presentation of all divine lives as our mother, and all children are under her mantle. And because of who she is, they can't deny any of her prayers or her requests. So therefore, it's given to her to come and mark her children who will live in the divine will. Um, but I'm just, I, I'm just, no, because heaven opened up on, on Holy Thursday when uh, he was at the Garden of Gethsemane, heaven was opened up. Um, so that's when, but when he ascended, it's when he took all souls that were waiting to enter into heaven, you know, Joseph, Elizabeth, uh, his grandparents, so forth. He, when he ascended, all souls, that's when they went into heaven. So that, that's when the blessed entered into, into heaven. But I'm, I don't, it's, I don't think it's ever written or where it's said, but I'm, you know, the hour of their death, what happened to those who died before Christ came. We know that Christ had to descend down even into the, into the, uh, throws of hell to show everybody in hell what he did for them in redemption and sanctification. Um, it was in, in limbo, in limbo. Yeah, they were in limbo, but I don't know at the moment of their death that they were given their chance to say yes, or is when it was Jesus presenting mm -hmm. himself and heaven was open they, up they, they were in limbo. They waited there. They we have waiting yeah. there until the, 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 the heaven uh, was opened, opened up. With, so that's, when they gave their of Jesus. so that's when they gave they their go with up. Jesus up. Yeah. Adam, Adam, Eve. Yeah. You know, they have all waiting. David. Yeah. The question, Paula, Moses. I guess the question <laughs> in my mind is would they, and it doesn't have to be answered, and we don't have to know the answer, but it's just one of those questions out there. Did their, with this reading, the blessed gave their yes to living in the fiat the moment of their death? Those who died before uh -huh. Jesus opened up heaven, yes. the question would be, did they give their fiat at the moment of their death, or did they give their fiat when Jesus came down and presented himself, and they said, oh, oh okay. absolutely, uh -huh. I want to go to heaven. I, in the moment of death. Moment of death. Okay. All right. Oh, I don't know, but I think it must I, be. I have a question, um, and you don't have to answer it right now. You can just per let it percolate unless you know the answer, and then let me know. Um, I'm a hospice worker, and uh, at for outreach ministry where I'm at at Holy Faith, 
And I'm just wondering how all of this talking about death and the last um, recognition of the divine will or whatnot, how can I apply this with my patients as, as they're going through this transitional phase in their life? Ricky, it's what we all do. We pray that everybody says yes at the moment of their death. But I do it every time I receive the Eucharist. I take all the blood of Christ, pour it, pour it, all the blood of Christ on every soul that is dying, that they say yes at the moment of their death to enter into heaven. It is what our Blessed Mother is praying and what she's doing at the moment at the out, Holy Mother Mary of God, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. That's what she's doing. And it's what the children of light are doing is everything is in your possession. So what would you do since you possess God himself? What would you do at each one of your patients the moment of their death, but to in, in, to insist, encourage, pound into their head, say yes, say yes, say yes to your it. death and mean it. Don't worry about the accusations. It's how you die with is matters, not what you did in your life. It's how you die, die in a state of grace. Say yes to the one act of God. Don't listen to the evil one or the accusations that are you're going to have in your head. You just need to say yes and just keep saying yes. That's what I would do. Well, okay, now I have, I have two questions. One is, is the Divine Mercy Chaplet related to this at all? And two, sometimes when I go into hospice, um, they're already brought in a condition where um, they're not there per se, but in spirit they are. And so I talk to my patients from spirit to spirit. I guess that would be apropos in that. Correct. Uh, in that case, yeah. Okay. And of course, the Divine um, Mercy Chaplet is because it's God's mercy. So pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet. But one prayer is enough in your trust because you contain God. If you if you gotta go in there trusting, believing that you contain God, what would God be doing at the moment? At, what's He doing at that moment at that person's death? That's what He's saying. That's the gift given to you. You are in front of every single soul at the moment of the death. By the way, that's all the way from Adam to the last soul. You, as a child of light, are there at the moment of their death. What would you do? You would say yes. Say yes. Right. Remember, it's that reading from from St. Paul, from the Philippians. Give me my joy. It'll be joy for you to enter heaven. Say yes. Say yes to the Lord. Die in a state of grace. Ask for mercy, which is the divine mercy. Ask for mercy. Say yes. And go. Today's gospel reading would echo what you're asking and, and what Mary is saying. He says, if you ask anything of me in my name, I will do it. So if you pray for this person who may be unconscious or under the effects of the drugs who's making them comfortable, if you ask Jesus to do this in his name, he will do it for you. You will, you will make it happen. It was, uh, Greg, Greg was uh, sharing something um, that Jesus asked him to pray a special prayer. He was on the street and there was a funeral procession you know and there was this coffin coffin yeah that uh, that body is and jesus said to him pray this because this soul was not yet um had made this decision to go towards god or to, to go to hell so it's not it's not like i think like we they think it's woof, moment of death soul goes out of the body and it's all decided there is somehow a little space of time that a soul is oh, what's happening and where I'm and then the soul can make the decision the soul can also already be outside the body and have still the time to make this decision towards God or towards hell I, 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 and, I, I think Paul that's why perhaps the words in the prayer are at the hour of our death rather than the moment of our yeah. death. It's what you're trying to 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 to, to, to outline and, and and visualize that there is. It's not like you said. It's not poof. Yeah. Does is it just from and, reading the writings? It doesn't feel like it's poof. But there's and I would I would dive the dying people and I will take the laugh of God and I will. 
dive them into the love because it's in that moment it's a, it's a conquering of love of the soul. Yes. That's all. The the soul has to be drown the soul yes. in God's love, yes. Can I add something to that, Ricky? Ricky, I, if I were with you and I you know I've been in a situation, similar situation. I start with asking my angel and the angel of the person to pray with me and to pray for this person. And of course, I would ask the Blessed Mother because I remembered my thinking of uh, the, of the wedding at Cana was Jesus' way of telling us without saying it specifically that our Blessed Mother, like you all said, like Paul explained, you know, she has God in her and God is, you know, and she is in God. So our Blessed Mother as I understand it from Jesus at the wedding of Cana, is a powerful woman who can obtain anything and everything from God, God within her and she in God. So I would do that in the presence of my angel, the angel of the person, and with Mama Mary speaking to the most holy trinity for this person. And of course, if I were close by next, next to this person, I am in healthcare, so I would hold his or her hand or, or touch because I believe that the dying needs that loving touch. It's God loving them, welcoming them through me, through us. And I would, even if they're not you physically, we think, but you know, he, they're still there. And I believe they can still hear. They're still present. Even actually in the coffin, they're still present until the last moment, like Paula said. And that's how I would begin. And I may say something like, you let the Holy Spirit speak and pray, you know, in you and with you. And I might be able to say how you are anticipating how that beauty, that wonder that eyes have not seen or heard, you know, will be the next like screen, the, the, the screen, the movie will open for her and that she will find herself in what Paula tried to describe earlier, you know, in the immensity of God and and in the wonder of heaven that will take us forever to discover. Because actually, as an aside, even on earth, I already experienced that foreverness or that eternity of discovering all the creations of God in all the wildflowers around me where I live. So I would say something like that with that person who is in the process of dying. But that touch, that loving hand, that loving presence, which is not just you, it's God working, giving his love through you, through Mama Mary and with the help of the angels, all the choirs of angels in fact saint michael because that person needs protection from the last minute blitzkrieg that satan will do you know for that person yeah. you know, I, exactly. human touch is so important that's yes. what jesus did he yeah. touched people okay mk your hand's still up so yeah. let's i'm trying to get tired sorry about that <laughs> no thank you thank you um for allowing me to speak um Back in 2018, um, you know, I was journeying back into the Catholic Church. I still wasn't quite there yet, but I found this beautiful Divine Mercy Chaplet that was sung by Donna Corey Gibson, and I absolutely fell in love with it. But my stepmother was passing away. She um, was diagnosed with cancer and just quickly declined. And so, you know, I would listen to the Divine Mercy chat chaplet as I was sitting by her side. And I'm going to see if I can get through this without crying. But I have a brother who is mentally handicapped and he brings us so much joy. But when she was home, she was on hospice and I knew it wasn't going to be long. And my brother came down from the stairs. And he said, Kathy, he said, Jesus is coming. He's, he's not here yet, but he's down the road, but he's coming. And he was, he was so excited. And I knew, I knew at that point that she, that day she was gonna, he was gonna come get her. This is 
all before I knew anything about Divine Mercy Chaplet, I didn't really understand what Divine Mercy Chaplet was other than I thought it was a beautiful, beautiful chaplet. And I didn't even know Divine Will. So it was so powerful that I just wanted to share that with you, be, you know, working in hospice, that it was really a beautiful death that I got to experience. So MK, just take it a little step further is what I said earlier. And hear my words because it's in the writings. All of us lived, we were all created in eternity. And we gave our yes in eternity. So although you not yet have given your, I'll say physical fiat to live in the divine will, God knew that you were going to live in the divine will because you gave your yes in eternity. And he's all knowing. So therefore, at the moment of your, was it your mother-in-law's passing? Is that what you said? My, my stepmother. Your stepmother's passing. It wasn't the divinity of God because of who you are. Remember, your soul is eternal. So from all eternity, he knew you were going to say yes. And we go back and we do all of our acts. We are there in the divine will of all of our acts, helping us our, um, through whatever we're going through. So that that's a very deep knowledge i understand but it's it's the truth it's from all eternity you were chosen to be there at your stepmother's death to do what needed to be done in the divine will and not just for her but for all souls past all. and future and if if you look on the divine mercy chaplet what is prayed there i offer god yeah. the father that the, the body blood the blood humanity divinity for forgiveness of the sins and this is really in the full in the fullness can only be done with children in the divine will because in the divine will we have possession of this mm -hmm. of the body and the blood of the I was have to translate, you know, that, that's the same to say, I take the blood of Jesus and I offer it. It's the same. It's just the same. Jesus gave it to Faust, to Sister Faustina so that this important prayer for the dying is in the world. But it's, it's a, a divine will prayer if you look really closely to yes. it. You can't, yes. you can't offer something you don't have. So it's a divine will prayer. You have to, and so it, it's to to this prayer. It's very important. It's very very good to pray this. You know what, Paul? The other divine will prayer. We could spend hours on this, and we won't because we should end this call. But the other divine will is: Oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of Thy mercy. Well, as you just said, you contain the all. You contain all souls lead them into heaven. That's the prayer for our times now. It is a divine will prayer. If you understand what you contain, which you contain, which you are in possession of. What what would you, what does Jesus tell us to do? He tells us to bring us all souls so that all oh my Jesus prayer that we pray in the rosary is exactly what Jesus says, bring me all souls. All right. Because we could, I'll stay all day with you, but John and Mel have uh, other things to do. <laughs> I believe them. Play with the last? Is that what yeah. you're doing? <laughs> oh, all right. Well, thank you, everybody. That was incredible. Thank you. Thank you for being here today and uh, and participating in, in, in today's cynical. We'll look forward. We still have some writings to carry over, so we'll pick it up again next week. Let's uh, go ahead and call down the, the kingdom, and we'll, we'll wrap up our cynical. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The sin of the supreme will come to reign upon the earth. The sin of the supreme will come to reign upon the earth. The sin of the supreme will come to reign upon the earth. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. May the will of the Father be known to the Son, power of the Holy Spirit, reign in me. Amen. All Thanks, right. Guys. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you. Uh, see you next week. Have a Thank you. It was great. Week. Appreciate it. It was awesome. See, see you guys. And, uh, Bye. Nice meeting you, Ricky. Oh, Gus. Bye. <laughs> nice to have you on. Hey, uh, we should tell him that. Um, are you? Are you?